then hello everyone. Um, I'm John. I'm a PhD student in the SAPA Research Group, led by uh, Professor Anur Mutlu at ETH Zurich. And today I'll present our work, Rohash, enabling fast and accurate real-time analysis of raw nanopore signals for large genomes. And nanopore sequencing is a widely used sequencing technology. It can sequence large fragments of nucleic acid molecules up to more than 2 million bases. It offers high throughput, it is relatively cost-effective, and it also enables real-time genome analysis, which is the main focus of our work. Let's look at how real-time genome analysis with nanopore sequencing works. This figure shows the sequencing of a nucleic acid molecule while it moves through a tiny pore called nanopore. As the molecules move through a nanopore, ionic current measurements are generated at a certain throughput. These measurements correspond to different nucleotides uh, in the molecule and form the raw signal data to analyze. And computational tools can then analyze all of these uh, signals uh, uh, at a speed that matches the throughput uh, the of, uh, of the raw signal data generation, which we refer to as real-time analysis. And based on this analysis, we can make, make some real-time decisions. These deci decisions can stop the sequencing process early if sequencing of a read or the entire sequencing run is unnecessary. Real-time genome analysis provides two important benefits. First, we can overlap the sequencing time with the analysis time, reducing the latency of the entire process. Second, we can stop sequencing of a read or the entire sequencing run, uh, and this capability essentially can significantly reduce the sequencing time and potentially the cost, making genome sequencing more efficient and cost-effective. There are several challenges to achieve real-time genome analysis. First, we need to maintain rapid analysis to match the throughput of an nanopore sequencer. This is essential for enabling real-time analysis. Uh, second, we need to make timely decisions to stop sequencing as early as possible. Otherwise, unnecessary sequencing can waste time, power, and money. Uh, third, uh, we need to ensure accurate analysis from noisy raw signal data. Noise in raw signals can cause variations even among the signals from identical nucleotides. Despite this, raw signal data holds richer information than just individual bases. Fourth, we need to achieve efficient computation for scalability and portable sequencing that is often connected to resource constraint devices such as mobile devices. Now that we have some basic background on real-time analysis with nanopore sequencing, let's go over with an executive summary of our work. Real-time analysis of raw nanopore signals lacks the necessary accuracy and speed for large genomes. This issue hinders us from fully exploiting the uh, potential of nanopore sequencing. And our goal in this work is to enable fast and accurate real-time analysis of raw, nanopore, raw signals for large genomes. To this end, we make two key contributions. First, we introduce the first hash-based mechanism for quick and accurate real-time analysis of raw nanopore signals for large genomes. Uh, second, uh, we introduce a novel technique called sequence until that can accurately and dynamically stop the entire sequencing run if further sequencing is not necessary. Our evaluations, extensive evaluations across uh, 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 three use cases and five genomes of varying sizes, including a, a large genome such as the human genome, shows that uh, raw hash outperforms the existing state-of-the-art works. It, uh, it offers an average throughput that is 25.8 uh, uh, times and 3.4 times uh, better than the existing two state-of-the-art works. It also delivers mapping results that are up to twice as accurate uh, for large genomes. And with the sequence until technique, we can reduce the sequencing time and potentially cost by 15 times. Before we dive into our mechanism, let's look at the existing two main solutions for uh, real-time genome analysis. First one is to use deep neural networks, or DNNs, to translate the signals to bases. And these base code sequences are then analyzed in real time uh, using, a, for example, a standard read mapping step. Uh, DNS provides less noise analysis from base code sequencing uh, sequences. However, these solutions come with high computational and power demands, which particularly create challenges for portable sequencing. Second common solution is to, is to directly map the raw signals to reference genomes without necessarily using DNNs or base calling mechanisms. Uh, these solutions provide an alternative and efficient ways to analyze raw signal data in real time. However, when mapping raw signals to reference genomes, the size of the genome plays a crucial role. For, uh, for small genomes, we have fewer candidate regions to analyze per read, which can allow for accurate mapping and high throughput. Uh, however, when we deal with large reference genomes, the number of regions to check per read increases substantially. Uh, this leads to two main challenges, essentially. First, the prior probabilistic mechanisms, such as uncode, can result in inaccurate mapping due to large number of regions to choose from. Second, the mechanisms such as SIGMAP that calculate distance on many regions per read significantly reduce the mapping throughput. 
we find that these existing solutions are inefficient or inaccurate for large genomes. Now that we covered the existing solutions and the problem, let's dive into our work, Rawhash. Our goal in this work is to enable fast and accurate real-time analysis of raw nanopore signals for large genomes. To this end, we propose Rawhash. Uh, we make two key contributions. First, we provide the first hash-based search mechanism to quickly and accurately map raw nanopore signals for large genomes. Second, we propose a novel technique called sequence until that can dynamically and accurately stop the entire sequencing run at once if further sequencing is unnecessary. I'll first explain the hash-based search mechanism in raw hash. The key observation in raw hash is that the identical nucleotides generate similar raw signals. And one way to identify these similarities is to calculate the distance between them as SIGMAP does. However, uh, this becomes too slow for large genomes in the existing state of the art work. Instead, we generate hash values from raw signals and quickly match them to identify similarities. And we find two key challenges to overcome. First, to match the hash values to each other, we need to generate the same hash value from similar raw signals. Second, to facilitate quick similarity search, we need to find accurate, but also fewer similar regions in a large reference uh, in a large space of reference genome. To solve these challenges, raw hash has four key steps in this mechanism. We start by converting the reference genome and raw nanopore signals into signal representation of KMERs known as events. Second, we quantize these events to reduce the variation effect in raw signals. Third, we generate the hash values from these quantized values to enable fast similarity identification by matching the hash values. In the last step, we perform chaining and mapping based on the matching regions between uh, raw signals and the reference genome. The left side of this figure refers to our offline indexing step for reference genomes, and on the right side, we show the steps that we take when mapping the raw nanopore signals in real time. Let's go over these steps, starting from the first step that converts the reference genomes and raw signals into events. In nanopore sequencing, an event is a specific segment of the, of the signal that corresponds to a particular KMER or sequences of K-nucleotides. Event detection is the process of identifying these segments that are generated when sequencing a particular KMER. And the start and end positions are usually marked by abrupt changes in the signal. And statistical methods are typically used to identify these abrupt changes in the signal. An event value is the average of all signals within the same event. Now that we know what events are, let's, uh, let's look at how we convert the reference genome and raw signals into events so that we can enable comparison between them. To convert the reference genome into events, we use a lookup table known as KMER model. This model provides an expected, uh, expected event values for each possible KMER. And it is pre-constructed based on the characteristics of nanopore sequencers. Uh, we use this KMER model to convert all KMERs of a reference genome to their expected event values, followed by a normalization step to generate the normalized event values to enable, uh, for comparison purposes. So we simply represent the reference genomes as series of their events rather than their KMERs. To convert signals to events, we use an event detection mechanism. This is done by uh, performing a statistical test or segmentation to identify the abrupt signal changes uh, generated as molecules move through nanopores, followed by mean calculation and normalization again. In high level, we assume that the consecutive events represent consecutive KMERs. And now that we have a series of events generated for both reference genomes or, and raw signals, let's explore if we can directly match these event values to each other to identify similarities. To explore this, I'll now go over the second step of our mechanism, uh, the quantization step. Uh, remember our observation that the identical KMERs generate slightly different raw signals. So this presents a challenge as we cannot directly match event values to each other since this will not be accurate due to variations. The key idea to overcome this challenge is to quantize the event values. So this enables us to assign the same uh, quantized values to similar event values. I'll now move to the third step in our mechanism, which generates the hash values from these quantized uh, uh, values of events. Uh, an event typically represents a very small KMR from six to nine uh, characters. So this results in a challenge as these short KMRs can appear in a large number of regions in the reference genome, uh, making direct matching of quantized event values infeasible. Our approach to this challenge is to form longer KMRs from consecutive uh, events. By packing the quantized uh, uh, values of, uh, of these events, uh, quantized values of events uh, into a single value. And to efficiently store uh, the, these packed values, we generate their hash values using a hash function. The benefit of this approach is that it allows for uh, direct matching of uh, larger regions from their hash values, uh, enabling swift identification of similarities. 
Now with the first step of our mechanism, let's cover how we put all these steps together to perform real-time mapping. So in, the, in both indexing and mapping steps, we generate hash values from reference genomes and streaming raw signal. For the reference genome, we store the hash values and their positions into a hash table uh, to enable efficient queries during mapping, which also concludes our indexing step. Then the hash values that are generated for raw signals in real time are queried using this hash table to quickly identify the matching positions between reference genome and raw signals. We then perform chaining between these matching positions and, identif and identify the mapping accordingly if there's a good chain of matches. In real time, we continue to decide if we should continue mapping a read or not based on the mapping information we generate so far. And if yes, we simply retrieve the next chunk of data generated in real time and continue our mapping. And if not, we can simply tell the sequencer to stop sequencing a read or the entire sequencing run using the read until or run until functionalities of Nanopore sequencer, respectively. This was the first part of our contribution we make in Rohash. In the second part, I'll very quickly describe the sequence until mechanism. The problem, with, uh, 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 the problem we tackle with the sequence until mechanism is to avoid unnecessary sequencing that can waste time, power, and money. So to mitigate this, the sequence until mechanism continuously evaluates if further sequencing of the entire sample is essential to achieve the similar accuracy we would achieve with full sequencing. If not, we can stop the sequencing early without sacrificing from accuracy significantly. This method solves the potential to, uh, to significantly cut down both the time and cost associated with sequencing. Also, the sequence until mechanism is compatible with any raw signal analysis tool. To provide a uh, practical example, let's consider the relative abundance estimation use case. Uh, considering this particular use case, the sequence until mechanism works in several steps. Uh, we generate and co we continue to generate relative abundance estimation after es every sequencing of every n reads. And we always retain the most recent t-estimation results. The next step involves detecting any outliers in these results by performing a cross-correlation between them. So if you find no outliers, it indicates that the recent sequencing of reads could not change the estimation results significantly. In such a scenario, no new significant information is likely to be gained from further sequencing. Therefore, we can make the decision to stop this entire sequencing run. If there is an outlier, we simply keep uh, sequencing as new reads keep changing re results. So we'll, I'll now move to our evaluation. We compare raw hash with two state of the artworks, uncalled and sigmap. And uh, we have three use cases for real time genome analysis. So, read mapping maps these to reference genome. Relative abundance estimation identifies the ratio of, of each genome in a particular sample. sample. We also briefly show the benefits of sequence until uh, mechanism for this particular use case. And the contamination analysis identifies if a sample is contaminated uh, uh, with a particular genome by mapping the reads to that genome. Our evaluation metrics include throughput, which is basis process per second, the potential reduction in sequencing time and cost, and accuracy. For accuracy, we map the base code reads uh, to, uh, of corresponding raw signals using Minimap2. And based on this, we calculate precision recall and, and F1 scores. And for relative amounts estimation, we additionally calculate the distance of each estimation that each tool generates to the ground truth estimations. We use five real data sets, including large genomes such as a human genome, for relative amounts estimation, we combine both the reads and the reference genomes used in all data sets from D1 to D5. And for contamination analysis, we combine the COVID-19 and the human read sets and map them to the COVID-19 reference genome. On the y-axis of this figure, we show the throughput results from each tool and inside the bars, their improvements over the throughput of a nanopore sequencer, which is around 400 bases per, uh, per second. On the x-axis, we show the data sets uh, we use uh, to generate these results. To achieve a real-time analysis, the throughput of the computational mechanism must be faster than the throughput of a nanopore sequencer. So if a bar below uh, the red line on this figure, this indicates a failed real-time analysis due to slower analysis than nanopore generates data. We observe that raw hash provides 25.8 uh, times and 3.4 times better average throughput comp compared to uncode and sigmap respectively. This is essentially achieved by efficient similarity search with raw hash. Uh, we also uh, find that SIGMAP cannot perform real-time analysis for large genomes due to cost distance calculation that it offers. We also look at how quickly raw hash and uncode stop sequencing based on, uh, based on the number of bases they process before stopping the mapping of a read. These number of bases are shown on the y-axis of this figure. And fewer bases to sequence provides an estimation on how much we can save from uh, the sequencing time and potentially the cost, so lower is better here. 
We find that rho hash reduces the sequencing time and potentially the cost for large genomes up to 1.3 times compared to uncode. This shows that uncode is not scalable to larger genomes, potentially due to increased noise uh, with large number of regions, which challenges its probabilistic decision. We also evaluate the read mapping accuracy for each data set separately, and, and the data sets combined for relative performance estimation and contamination analysis. We find that raw hash produces the best accuracy in all metrics for large genomes, up to 2.13 uh, times uh, for the F1 score compared to uncode and SIGMAP. So this is essentially because we can find, uh, fine tune the sensitivity related parameters in raw hash while still matching the throughput of nanopore sequencer, which is specifically not the case for SIGMAP as even the default parameters of SIGMAP uh, falls behind the nanopore sequencer. Uh, for smaller genomes, the accuracy of raw hash is on par with uncode and SIGMAP, although these tools usually provide better accuracy than, than raw hash. Last, we look at the relative abundance estimation results. This table shows the uh, abundance estimation that each tool uh, makes based on their mapping and their Euclidean distance to the ground truth estimation and lower is better. We find that raw hash provides the best relative abundance estimation closest to the ground truth estimations. Uh, so this is consistent with the best heat mapping accuracy results uh, raw hash provides for large genomes, as this particular use case also includes a large reference genome data set. We invite you to check our paper for more discussion on the results we show regarding the real implementation of sequence sample using raw hash. We show that we can sequence only 7% of the entire sample while providing highly accurate uh, results similar to using the entire sequencing data set. We also show the simulated benefits of sequence sample not just on raw hash but also on uncalled. We find that sequence sample can provide significant benefits for uncalled too. You can find more results such as uh, mapping time per read, overall computational resources uh, required by each tool, uh, performance breakdown of steps in raw hash, and details on all our mechanism configuration details and trade-offs between the DNM-based approaches and raw signal mapping in our paper. You can use the CR code to access our uh, paper published in bioinformatics as part of the proceedings of ISMB and ECCB. And you can use the CR code to access our source code. Rof has supports all major raw signal formats such as FAST5, POT5, SLOW5, and BLOW5. Uh, we provide easy to use scripts to download all of our data sets and to reproduce all of our results. You can also write your own outlier function to improve the sequence until. And we continue to improve our implementation uh, and our upcoming feature is to direct integration to the MinNo API. And last, uh, although we have not explained it, our hash-based approach enables using the existing sketching techniques, such as minimizers, strobe mirrors, uh, and fuzzy seat matching with blend, which was not possible before for mapping raw nanopore signals. This is because we can now identify similarities using simple hash uh, matches from hash values. In fact, we already implement the minimizer sketching technique in raw hash, but we leave this explanation and evaluation for future work. Let's conclude. We provide the first hash-based mechanism for quick and accurate uh, analysis of raw nanopore signals for large genomes. Uh, we also propose sequence until that can accurately and dynamically stop the entire sequencing run if further sequencing is unnecessary. Raw hash provides significant improvements in terms of the overall throughput and also the accuracy for large genomes. And sequence until can reduce the uh, sequencing time and cost by 15 times. Uh, for, um, we believe that there are many opportunities lie ahead for analyzing raw nanopore signals in real time. For example, we can now use many hash-based existing sketching techniques for raw signals, now that we can use hash values to identify similarities uh, between them. Indexing is raw, in raw hash is very cheap. This means that there can be many new use cases by enabling on-the-fly index construction. In general, we should rate the algorithms to perform downstream analysis fully using raw signals without necessarily base calling them to use their rich information and reduced analysis latency, sequencing time, and cost. With that, I'll conclude my talk and I'm happy to take questions.